NFO has found the secret to help all the farmers. Help all the farmers. Help all the farmers. NFO has found the method with a good plan of action for the justice at the marketplace. A federal district court in Wichita, Kansas, has awarded National Farmers Organization a $156,000 judgment against a Kansas bank that allegedly defaulted on agreement to finance purchase of up to 20,000 feeder lambs blocked by NFO in Colorado in 1976. We have on the phone from Ogden, Utah, Dick Hammond, head of NFO Sheep and Lamb Division. Dick, what would you say was the basic cause of this problem? As we put this block together, uh, it attracted uh, quite a bit of interest from the different buyers, and we were contacted by a buyer in Kansas. Uh, we negotiated a price with him, found it acceptable to the membership, and then we immediately went for a credit check, which is mandatory in all of our dealings in forward contracts or any other contracts. The bank that was uh, advancing the credit line to this buyer uh, okayed the, the transaction. After four or five shipments of lambs, the checks uh, were turned down at the bank, and the buyer informed me that the bank had withdrawn the credit line and he had no money to pay for these sheep. This was directly due to a drop in the market. Uh, we had sold these lambs at 50 and a half, and uh, the market was at that time somewhere in the low 40s. All members were paid, uh, I believe, within 10 days. This took place back in 1976. How was the NFO uh, Colorado sheep producers actually protected? What happened is that the reserve stepped in and paid the growers in 1976 dollars, by the way, it took us five years uh, to get this case to court where it's in 1981, which of course there's a large difference between 1976 dollars and 1981 dollars. And now we're facing uh, probably uh, an appeal. This situation, I believe, is a classic example of NFO applying uh, the new programs and techniques to see that the grower and the members are protected. They can rest assured that when a contract is signed, uh, no matter what happens to the buyer, that uh, they have trust uh, and reserve behind them and this kind of uh, protection. Uh, is this a landmark uh, for the organization and for the members? Well, it certainly is. We were awarded to the penny our claim. I believe that this is a indicative of how well NFO has learned to get their uh, administration and accounting to the point that uh, it's totally acceptable when we come to a situation like this. That was Dick Hammond from Ogden, Utah. This is a unique protection for NFO members, and the judgment would reimburse NFO trust funds that had to be spent to make good on its end of contracts with Colorado ranchers. Members are making things happen across the country. In Michigan, through program marketing, their sales for June delivery was for $4 a bushel on corn and $10 a bushel on soybeans. Joe Paris talks about their progress. We've just successfully completed a membership drive, uh, adding new members to the organization in both dairy and grain. It's been probably the most successful drive that we've ever had in the state of Michigan. And one of the reasons why it's been so successful is because we started planning back in March. We started with a meeting on April 29th. We had into that meeting about 300 dairy producers. Uh, they had been contacted and came in and listened to Al Scott as he presented the NFO dairy program. And also Andy Newtsling came in and explained the cull cow program. We successfully then run for four weeks, double volumes of cattle through our collection point up there, and all this helped build the momentum for the drive. We've also run several weeks of advertisement, talking about guaranteed checks, which is a big uh, selling point in the state of Michigan to our dairy farmers. We've had in the state of Michigan the last two years one major dairy bottler going bankrupt and 20 grain elevators that went out of business. And so when we talk about the benefits of farmers having a guaranteed check, it's one of the big selling points on our program here in Michigan. Some of the farmers that we have signed up, one individual in particular is milking 400 cows. They pick up 28,000 pounds of milk at his uh, bulk tank every other day. We had three farmers that also not only have grain but have milk. 
combined and the three of them had over 10,000 acres of grain that they would be marketing through National Farmers Organization. This just shows some of the success we've had, not only in the milk up here, but also in uh, your other commodities of grain and meat. We believe in the total program here in Michigan. We have only just begun at this point. The follow-up work is going to give us many uh, more producers. It's going to build the grain program very strong in that area. There has been a boom in hog contracts and the concept of forward contracting with packers. Arlo Jacobson, editor of the NFO Reporter, was on the road in Wisconsin and had this visit with a banker. I'm talking today with James Wright, Agricultural Lending Officer for Commercial Bank, Monroe, Wisconsin. You were telling me about a meeting that the Greene County bankers organized last fall for farmers in this area with experts telling them about forward contracting. What prices could farmers have contracted for at that time? December 1st, they could have contracted hogs for February for $58 and cattle, I believe, for close to 75 A good opportunity at that time, I think, to hedge. I just had a hunch, and shortly after that time, interest rates started to rise again, and a lot of uncertainty came into the markets. Grain fell, and hogs and the livestock market fell drastically after that period of time. Well, then what happened in February when the farmers sold those hogs and cattle for cash? I uh, recall that uh, February hogs were about $38 when he could have contracted them for somewhere maybe 55 to 56, maybe even 58 at that time. The beef was uh, probably in the upper 50s. Let's now talk to Merle Sunken, director of NFO Hog Division. Merle, you just heard the banker's comments on hedging. What's the difference between NFO's forward contracting and that of speculating hedging? Speculating hedging is nothing more than people buying and selling paper contracts, you might say, on the board of trade, and here again, many thousands may be bought or sold in any one given day. The forward selling program with the National Farmers Organization is physically selling the hogs and delivering the hogs at the specified times, locking in that producer a cost of his production and possibly at this time even some profit into it. How's the response among bankers about your forward contracting program? This has been accepted very well amongst the loaning institutions because now when the producer wants to borrow some money for a hog operation, he has his hogs already sold, we know what the price is going to be, and of course this assures the banker of a good payment back on his loan. It assures the producer that he has his hogs locked in and the producer has not had this opportunity on the local market in the past. In Montana, where the members' grain is moved by unit trains and program marketing, the NFO average price is $150 a ton. The local price, only $113 a ton. It's the same in California. Barley price locally, $123 a ton, and NFO, $132 a ton. Wheat, the local price, $121 to $124 a ton, and through NFO program, $155 a ton. California PCA officials reported NFO members received 20% more for cotton. Larry Wadel from the Fresno marketing area tells why he participates through the NFO. In that first year, eight years ago, I achieved about a eight cents a pound, or about 20% advantage through the NFO. And so without much further study, I at that time switched over to the NFO cotton program and through our method of blocking uh, acres and uh, authorizing uh, sizes of blocks, uh, we generally put up a number of blocks in different sizes and that uh, we authorize the uh, movement of these blocks at the general market level or better and then we take our yearly averages. And What I have discovered is that I have averaged from uh, the lowest I ever was was five cents a pound higher than the other main organizations or marketing organizations here in California to as high as 11 cents a pound. And so the return of dollars has certainly been a benefit to me from my participation in the NFO cotton program. USDA says farm production costs is up 14 to 19 percent this year over 1980. This is just part of the picture. There's a tremendous farm debt story. 
We have NFO President Devon Woodland here, and we're going to ask him, how does the farm debt really look? One of the frightening things is, is the Farm Credit Administration has come out with some figures just recently, wherein they quote farm debt in 1950 at $12 billion and net farm income at 13.6. So we have net income exceeding farm debt in 1950. Now, the frightening thing is, as you see farm debt increase and the ratio deteriorating in net income, in 1980, there was $160 billion worth of farm debt and only $22 billion of net income. In other words, farm debt increased 1,600% during that period of time, and net income only increased 90%. Well, what's the real outlook then for agriculture in the future? Of course, the collective bargaining concept is what uh, must be embraced. What exactly is the concept for collective bargaining? Collective bargaining is well understood by all phases and segments of society. Now, there's no uh, deep, uh, dark secrets. There's no mystery. It's a very simple concept. And those who have used it in other phases of society have been successful. And it simply means that you have something that someone else either wants or needs, and they can get it no other place, whether it be man hours or whether it be farm production. And then you take a sufficient volume of that commodity, whatever it is, and you go to the needer or the user and uh, sit down and negotiate an agreement that is acceptable to both parties, and then to make it binding on both parties, you negotiate a contract. Now, we all know that you have more bargaining power with a 100,000 bushel of grain than you do a 100 bushel, and you have more bargaining power with a 1,000 head of cattle uh, than you do with 10 head of cattle. So volume is extremely important uh, as you begin to negotiate contracts, which is referred to as collective bargaining. How does the buyers react to collective bargaining? Well, of course, the buyers have repeatedly told us that the price they pay isn't important to them, but their concern is that their competition may be able to buy the commodity cheaper and thus, thus put them in an unfair competitive position. But the buyers are in the business to buy. And we as producers, we're in the business to sell. And so it just simply means that they buy, you sell, and you have to negotiate a contract that's acceptable, that uh, serves the purpose of both. Now, the buyers know that uh, as long as they can buy from the individuals, that they can buy it cheaper, and hence they control the price. So it becomes important to understand that if we're to receive our costs of production, it must be through collective bargaining. Now, unless this is done, then, of course, the buyer will control the price. How the production moves into the system is what's important. If it moves in through their system, the buyer's system, then, of course, he will control the price. But if producers will design a system of their own and move the supply through their system, then, of course, they'll have a greater impact on the price. But there must be competition. And if you disrupt the traditional marketing system, uh, to where the buyer can't fill his needs uh, through the normal traditional system, he'll begin to look for other ways to fill those needs. And he'll do it in one of three ways. The first thing that he will do is raise the price in an attempt to attract the producer to sell. If that doesn't trigger the movement of commodities to him, then he will expand his geographic area into the area of a competitor in an attempt to fill his needs. If this is unsuccessful, then he will go to that group that is moving a supply away from him, and he'll negotiate with them in an attempt to get that supply back to his plant, because he only makes money when his plant's running. And this is the goal of the National Farmers Organization, is to get the buyers at a negotiating table for a supply that they have need of and that we're in the business of selling. City people's wages are getting higher every day.